In Matthew 8, we meet two people who were possessed by demons. How can that be? And where do demons come from anyways? Well, demons were originally created by God as angels, but one third of the angels rebelled against God and were kicked out of heaven. Revelation 12 describes this event. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Now, in the Old Testament, pagan religions included good, but also evil gods, and certainly evil spirits. King Saul, after he rejected God, was tormented by a spirit. Now, in the New Testament, we meet people who weren't just tempted or tormented by a spirit, but are actually demon-possessed. Sorcery and witchcraft were common around the Mediterranean in the first century, but even Gentiles would have been kind of freaked out by their rabid behaviors, and like in Matthew 8, actually slept in tombs with the dead. Gross. Anyways, as powerful as the demon-possessed people were, they were no match to Jesus' authority. Even today, people can be possessed by demons. Now they have to reject God and pursue evil and sin and open themselves up to all kinds of evil, but it does happen. As Christians, we're called to stay vigilant and to not bring evil into our lives. And we remember that in our baptism and through faith in Jesus, that we are actually filled with the Holy Spirit so we cannot be possessed by demons. When we're scared or tempted, we can call upon Jesus' name where there's power. So there you go, a little bit about demons, and that's enough today for our historical minute.